Well, the 2nd of July was the day we crossed over from the South Island to the North Island, so the one or two brief clips on the ship on the way over, they certainly stacked everybody on board because the ferry hadn't been sailing for the last couple of days, but due to the cold wind there weren't very many people outside. The scenery up the sounds is rather nice, it takes about an hour to sail up through the sounds and out through Tory Channel onto the strait, but uh, you can see it's pretty flat calm now and uh, it was a very pleasant sailing all in all. We spent most of the time in the lounge, mainly because I wasn't able to walk terribly much. There weren't very many people out and about in their boats, but there were one or two. And then of course finally we were out on the strait where we got called out to have a look for a whale that had been spotted. You can see the South Island disappearing and the North Island appearing. So that gives you a bit of an idea of uh, Cook Strait. We're all busy looking for whales and nobody's finding anything much at all. He's out there somewhere, but uh, pretty elusive. The south coast of the North Island is pretty inhospitable, and that's just a pan around of the, the whole strait, really. We're in the middle of it, approximately, and uh, approaching the North Island. That's, I suspect, Capity up there, and the North Island's gradually appearing. So that's a little bit of um, crossing Cook Strait, I guess. It's the 3rd of July. We can't park in our usual spot because there's a truck there. And it's, uh, I think, 2 degrees, which is better than minus 2, which it is at home. The sun is coming up. Just been buzzed by, oh, <laughs> oh, three of them. Three big twoies. Oh, I've got the sun behind me, so that's a slightly better angle. Yeah, the sun's still pretty low. It is only, uh, what is it, half past eight? No sign of the eels in the stream on this particular occasion. One of the first things to do, of course, is to have lunch when you arrive in a new place, and then the ladies went off to do some shopping while I just amused myself by not going very far. I was interested in the roadworks over the road, though. This is one town that certainly needs a bypass through it because the state highway goes right through the middle of the town, which is a minor inconvenience, to put it mildly. However, it's all happening, and... Uh, no wonder it was cold. There was quite a bit of snow up on the local mountains. I've never seen that before. And a huge amount of work going on for the road over the other side of the railway line. We had stopped in a delightful little town and uh, we had some precious time with our sister-in-law, which was really good, before heading off um, up north again. Just a quick shot out the bedroom window for want of anything better to do. Well, when it was time to leave, we followed our sister-in-law a little bit of the way um, and had a stop for lunch at a local garden centre that was very pleasant before heading back out onto the highway and uh, up north. Or oh, I'll go past the gate, it would be even better. Just watch that tree up on the... Oh, here's this one. <laughs> Well, a final toot goodbye, and we have to find our way back out onto the motorway and uh, away up north towards our daughter's place. Exit the roundabout onto the ramp, then continue onto State Highway 1. Part of the trouble with motoring in this part of the world is that the Capity Coast, north of Wellington, is becoming a very, very popular place for people to move and, and to live. And although there is a rail service into uh, Wellington, it's not sufficient on the roads to keep up with the growth. So there's a huge amount of work being done all around the area. Um, there are little towns on the way. I don't think... Uh, I think from memory that's Otaki that we were going through at this point and that's where a lot of the in initial stage of the diversion stops. 
While it isn't the most inspiring of towns, you can get a bit of an idea travelling through the main street or part of the main street that, um, oh, by the way, they've got Scottish food I see on the left. What would any town be without it? Anyway, apart from that, we uh, give you a bit of an idea of a sort of typical Kiwi main road town. You can see why, though, they want the bypass eventually. I can't imagine a future forever putting State Highway 1 right through the middle of a town like this when it can be so easily bypassed as indeed one day it will be no doubt so that's Levin A lot of the North Island is fairly nondescript. The countryside around here is not terribly exciting. Um, you get out to the area near Palmerston North, it gets a bit flatter and inclined to um, flood a bit when there's excessive rain. But um, it's very much like this pretty much until you start climbing up onto the uh, volcanic plateau, which we'll do a jump ahead and do. Uh, just a little bit before that though we come to a major intersection in the road the town of Sanson where you meet the main road coming in from Palmerston North on the right and heading on towards Whanganui so we follow that round to the left for a little while and then uh, at Bulls you turn off and head north and that's when the real climbing starts as you make your way up to the volcanic plateau. Possibly worth mentioning just on the left as we go around this corner is the Air Force Base, the major Air Force Base, uh, Ohakia, where when we used to have jet aircraft, they were in fact based at Ohakia. But now that we don't have any at all, we um, really only throw stones at people who look a little bit unfriendly. That was where really the Laha came down, wasn't it? No, oh, that was Tangi Wai. Tangi Wai, that's right. I don't know. I thought it was in the wrong place. It's up on the desert road. The next major change of direction is in Balls, and uh, we're about to turn inland. If we went straight ahead, we'd end up at um, Whanganui, probably. But we are heading up and this is where basically the climbing starts and it continues all the way up through Taihapi and up onto the volcanic plateau which on this particular trip ended up with quite a story attached some of which has resulted in the caravan currently being away for some new bits to be fitted. More about that anon though. Now I did say it was called Bulls, look to the right, yeah, and out of Bulls and on and up. Periodically you come across small North Island towns which uh, are not very frequent but they are quite pretty when you do come across them. I can't remember what this particular one was called. 
One way to keep yourself amused on a trip like this, of course, is to have the radio on, so um, we did, but it wasn't music, unfortunately, so I've cut it out. Interesting to see the pivot irrigation systems are up here as well. Of course, we're very familiar with them in Canterbury, but uh, quite a bit of flat land and uh, quite a lot of farming going on around this area. Now, the North Island is pretty much uh, very up and down, and as I said earlier, primarily up on the way to the volcanic plateau. But we're just coming into the, I think it's the Mangaweka viaduct. You can see it on the skyline up ahead where the railway line goes across quite a considerable gorge. There are quite um, a few big ones in the North Island and there's a stopping place down there on the left as well and we've been down there in the past when a train has gone across the the viaduct. It's, uh, it's a good sight, it's worth stopping and having a look at. Once upon a time we forgot to close the caravan flap until I was at the top of this climb but by then it was too late unfortunately and the wind had got underneath it and blown it backwards ripped the hydraulic stays right out from underneath uh, the caravan and we had to seal it shut all the way up to Cambridge so typical we know this road as well as we know some of the roads in the South Island more by the things that have happened when we've been driving along them in the past than uh, one would want really to remember. Just a little bit up the road is the Mangaweka Township, again a very small township. Used to be characterised by a great big aircraft that was on display here, a DC-3, but it seems to have disappeared. And that's a shame because it was a real feature. There's not much of the town and uh, already we're leaving it, so Hello Mangaweka and goodbye Mangaweka. Nice to have known you. Remember years ago bringing Jenny up here when she first moved to the North Island. Finally we arrived at Tai Happy and the sun is getting low enough and it was continually in our face which was a little bit annoying so we decided we'd find a campground at Tai Happy and uh, stop for the night. However unfortunately it turned out to be a lot more difficult than we thought it was going to be and the campground concerned was up a very narrow road on a quite steep incline over a one-way bridge and uh, to put it mildly made it very very awkward getting to it. When we got there we found there was nobody home and uh, it wasn't a functioning campground at all. So we quit. Um, I'm just pulling over because it's an opportunity in the town to let a bit of traffic get past me and uh, we went off from here looking for the camping ground. We didn't find it. The moment you leave Tai Happy, you really start seriously climbing and uh, up onto the, the volcanic plateau, which at this time of the year is high and, uh, as we discovered, very cold. Needless to say, we won't be bothering with that camp again, and from here on it didn't get a hell of a lot better. Turned out there was nobody there anyway and the camp was completely and utterly deserted. So we did toy with the idea of spending the night there and thinking to heck with it. Actually we probably should have done, but um, we didn't. We headed on towards Waiuru 
That was a mistake as well. It's a pig of an entrance. No, you can't oh, no. go out that no, way. You can't. What's grand? Hop out please and tell me what's... I knew this was going to happen. Yeah, we bottomed out. On what? On, on the drawbar. Right, so will it be alright? Yes. way we came, thank you very much. No. Mind this car. Part of the reason why we ended up at Waiuru and didn't go any further was the fact that, as you can see, the sun is full in my face and it was not terribly pleasant driving. It was also a very prolonged and heavy pull all the way up out of uh, Tai Happy, up onto the desert road, and um, between that and the fact that we'd been driving all day and it seemed like a good idea to stop for the night, we decided we would. <laughs> and that proved to be an interesting decision as well. So after a tremendous lot of climbing up, we get the first glimpse of Mount Ruapehu over there on the right hand side of the road. Uh, the other factor of course in deciding to stay the night was the fact that the sun was in the wrong place for the mountains and we thought the view would be a lot better the next morning and we turned out to be quite correct actually. They'll be fabulous in the morning with the sun coming up in the other direction. So this is the township of Waiuru. Uh, it's an army base primarily and on the right is the New Zealand Army Museum. Hence the tank and the various artillery pieces. And in behind the museum is a stopping place for caravans, a free camping area. And we thought initially that it was quite a good idea to 
go in there and bunker down for the night. What we didn't bargain on was quite the degree of cold. Um, I found out later it had gone down as far as minus 11. Um, it didn't feel quite like that, it felt more like minus 20. Uh, by 7 o'clock in the evening the grass was breaking under the weight of your feet on it and <laughs> at 2 o'clock in the morning the gas bottle ran out and the heating went off. So in an attempt to change that over, which I managed to do quite easily, we um, then flattened both the house batteries and that was interesting as the slide out was out and so was the, the aerial was also up. However, we weren't the only people there and uh, thank goodness for other people's generators. We went up the road and hired one actually. Got enough power back in the outfit to get going again. But that's a whole extra story. Well, we're probably getting the last of the summer, <laughs> the last of the sun, rays of the sun. It's certainly not summer. The mountains are white and we're hoping that in the morning the sun will rise on our right hand side and we'll get a good view from the Air Force Museum at Waiuru, which is where we are parked up at the moment. Having had enough for one day.